He's watching us. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Beautiful, healthy children. That's what these seven-year-old triplets look like, but looks can be deceiving. Martin, Micah, and Mason were all born with cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is the most common, lethal, hereditary disease which you find in the Caucasian race. It is a disease which affects three main organ systems, the lungs, intestinal tract, and the sweat glands. Dr. Spock yeah, treats the Brewer boys though. and explains that infection usually wins out in these sensitive organs, and although great strides have been made in CF research, odds are the boys probably will not live past their 20s. Many don't live that long. You think about it continually, you can't stop that being a mom or a dad, you know, you think about your kids in, uh, in your old age a lot, I think about my old age a lot, you know, they'll be gone before I will, that's a, that's a bummer. It's tough, but mom and dad do what they can to make life as normal as possible. We don't hinder them from being a normal kid. We exercise is a big thing to do. I mean, we push them to go out and run and breathe, and that helps them stay healthier, we believe. But finding time to play like a normal child is a struggle. Right now, the family takes time every day to visit Mason, who's in the hospital for a tune-up of sorts. So I hear you did better on your PFT test, huh? There, there's a magic word, though, that we're saying, isn't there? What is that magic word? Also packed into the already busy schedule, constantly feeding the three boys who require high-calorie diets. And their school and homework, things healthy kids don't have to do. No spray and run me. Good job. He knows what he's doing. Do you have to take them every day? Yeah. No, How many times? Uh, two. Yeah, the boys take all sorts of medication many times every day, and then hours worth of breathing exercises and other treatments. There's not too much time for going out and having fun. <laughs> but they're good kids about it. They know what to no. do first. One day at a time. That's the only way the Brewer family can face the fate of having children with a terminal illness. But that's not the only battle this family faces. With med multiplied by three, medication alone costs this family more than $4,000 a month. Tomorrow we'll find out how the family copes financially and how the state may or may not be helping out. Lisa Patton, WTVD 11 News. Beat-ups. It's not child abuse, but something Matt and Debbie Brewer do to their triplet boys for hours each day. The boys were born with a cystic fibrosis. While beat-ups require a lot of time, other treatments require a lot of money. This is a very expensive disease, and even without hospitalizations, it costs approximately uh, five to $10,000 a year. Now multiply that times three. This costly stack of medicine is only a one-month supply. And with one of the boys running up a hospital bill in the tens of thousands of dollars, how do the brewers pay the medical bills? They don't. The brewers have to live at or below the poverty level to qualify for state medical aid. But who pays for those normally things, like the boys' tennis shoes, their blue jeans, their toys, and of course the groceries to feed them? Well, we have lots of friends that have make $40,000 a year, got two kids, and they're saying they can't make it. The state poverty level for a family of five is now just over $13,000. And we are just awed at how they constantly struggle with having to live at the poverty level with because they can't earn enough more money and still qualify for benefits. Joe O'Keefe works for the state to provide aid to families like the Brewers. While she admits the current system of a catch-22, there has to be a cutoff point. If you could raise revenues through sales and crops, that would be wonderful, but the only way anybody can think of the magic answer is taxation. Obviously, that's not something we can... Not a very popular idea. Uh, right. But we're here because Duke Hospital's here, not because we get the best help from the state. The Brewers are grateful for the aid they do receive, but they would rather work regular jobs for regular pay to help relieve some of the emotional tension, as well as give their boys a better life. As it stands now, the boys live off Sosie. If they were to pay for the drugs like they are right now, and turn me and Debbie loose to work, then Social Security could keep their money. Yeah. The federal government could keep their money, and then they could give it out to the old people and give it to the people who need it. The Brewers were not fortunate enough to have extensive medical insurance when the boys were born. And now, even if they could find an insurance company that would cover them, how could they afford it? They can't even afford medical insurance for themselves. Debbie hasn't even had an OBGYN checkup in eight years. Like you said, it was day to day. You just don't think about yeah. the future.
Lisa Patton, WTVD 11 News. Every parent hopes for healthy children. If that hope does not come true, it's a tragedy. But imagine having the unthinkable happen not once, not twice, but three times. I'm Lisa Patton, and in WT News Special Report, we'll visit a family that lives with a daily heartbreak. Three children with cystic fibrosis. How do they cope? One day at a time. Tomorrow on WTVD 11 News at 530. Today's FDA approval of the drug Epigen will have a dramatic impact on Cheryl Pearson's life. This Durham woman has been on kidney dialysis for two years. Her kidney so failure resulted in occasional anemia, which makes blood transfusions necessary. But when Cheryl begins taking Epigen, she will no longer require blood transfusions. Today's news has Cheryl... Real excited. Anything that makes me feel better is exciting. Anything that can help the other patients feel better is exciting. Very exciting. This is a kidney dialysis machine. This is actually the artificial kidney here. Now this machine does a very good job of filtering the blood. But our kidneys also create a hormone that stimulates red blood skin in our bodies. And that is a function this machine cannot do. The hormone is called erythropoietin. In healthy individuals, the kidney produces the hormone and it travels through the bloodstream to the bone marrow, where it stimulates production of oxygen-carrying red blood cells. Patients with chronic kidney failure don't produce enough erythropoietin and therefore have a lowered red blood count or anemia. The new drug Epigen is a synthetic version of erythropoietin and will solve the anemia problem. Duke Medical Center's Dr. Steve Schwab calls the new drug a breakthrough. The patient that they feel dramatically better and it has really been in the patient's eyes probably the single most important thing that's come to them since dialysis itself was developed in the 60s. Today's good news is tempered by the fact the drug is expensive. It could cost thousands a year to treat a single patient. But Medicare has given tentative approval to the drug, so patients like Cheryl Pearson are optimistic that they'll be able to afford a drug that will automatically improve their quality of life. George Mallet, WTBD 11 News. A win keeping their world cuts a lot. Good for the Americans. A little ACC talent there. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Well, finally tonight, not every exciting car race happens on the NASCAR circuit. WTVD photojournalist Dave Wertheimer takes us for a few laps around the remote control track through the camera's eye. I used to race real sprint cars, so yeah, it's a good sport. I like to do it. Get the jitters. It's like in a real car. What these cars are, you got to put yourself, your brain, in a car without being in the car and that's a lot tougher than being in a real car. It satisfies you. It satisfies you and gets you off the streets. Drivers, test your steering. On your marks, get set, go. The lead has changed. Phillips has now moved into first place. Frosty has fell back in the second position. Browning is now in third. Bennett has moved way up to fourth place. Everybody likes to win. And uh, other than that, it's just something, it's just a nice hobby. You know? Congratulations, Don. That was a nice race. All right. Dave Wertheimer is one of our best. The report for tonight. Thanks very much for watching. For Lisa Patton, Tony Debo, and the entire WTVD 11 News team, I'm George Mallet. Have a good night. This has been a presentation of WTVD 11 News, serving the heart of Carolina for more than 30 years. Oh, ho, ho, what do you say? Yes, it's Christmas in July and it's very nice out here. I love it. Hi Santa Claus. Hey Shug, how you doing? Give me a hug. <laughs> oh, these kids needed a visit from Santa Claus. Why? Oh, they just need a little something extra to, you know, make them be better. <laughs> to be good kids. Have you been a good girl? How you doing? Have you been a good girl? She wants to see Santa Claus. Hey little darling. My goodness me. 
Start him young. Do you like Christmas? Is it fun? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. These kids are special because they're orphans. They don't have a mother and a father, and they need something extra in their lives, and I'm here to, to help put, put it there. And San Santa does it big time. Merry By 3.30 in the afternoon, cars of Who fans are making their way toward Carter-Finley Stadium, and the tailgate parties begin. But some people have too much to drink, becoming drunken charges of Wake County Sheriff's deputies. Sir, he's making this worse, okay? You suck! Becky Horton doesn't need a drink to improve her mood. She's plenty happy. Who's playing here? We are here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Y'all are great. <laughs> Who loves you, baby? Indeed, Becky's mood is indicative of this crowd. There is an electricity here, a sense that history is taking place. Shortly before showtime, bassist John Entwistle confirms this is probably the Who's farewell tour. I don't, I don't think any of us will want to do, do another one. I don't think we're going to see a 30th anniversary or 50th. Or 50th, or 50th. Forget it, I won't be here. Moments after that declaration, Ant Whistle is on stage with his rock colleagues, Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend. Daltrey, in particular, seems unscathed by time. The face still youthful, the body fit. Perhaps more weathered is Townsend. But the stories of his hearing loss, of the toll age has taken, seem unfounded, as familiar chords are sounded on his acoustic guitar. The crowd is, to use an overused expression, ecstatic. They are not just witnessing history, enveloped in it. Back to the Good. There's no mistaking it, Bill Phillips really? loves tobacco, and his love affair with the business is still going strong after 52 years. 1937, after high school, I came up here and got a job. Went to work for 10 cents a As a laborer, he dreamed of being an auctioneer. I liked it. There was a lot of glamour to it back then. Phillips got to know tobacco growers from Asheboro to Georgia. Now he runs a tobacco warehouse serving much of Edgecombe County. And he's busy with last minute preparations for next week's opening day sale. One of the biggest changes Bill Phillips says he's seen in all his years in the business is opening day. He says it's nothing like it used to be. Dude, you don't have the, uh, the crowd wires like you used to. Oh. Opening day, I can remember when the, the women would quit what they were doing and bring the kids to town. Oh, it, it was it was nice. <laughs> so what keeps Phillips going now that he's 69 and suffers from asthma? I've survived on ne nectarines and nicotine. Though he says he stopped smoking to protest government taxes on cigarettes. His health like it is, I've never seen anyone go like he does. I've enjoyed the years I've been in it, and I'll continue. I really do. In Rocky Mount, Kay Kusuda, WTVD 11 News. For four-year-old Jeffrey Vasquez and his father, Ralph, today was a bit of paradise. Along with other fans, they spent the day with the Wolf Pack. First, the team worked out under the anxious gaze of their faithful, and there was even a place to get some keepsakes. Following the workout, Wolf Pack announcer Gary Dornberg introduced the 89 edition of the Red and White one by one. Shane Montgomery. 
It's with a great deal of pleasure that I bring on the head coach of the Wolfpack, Dick Sheridan. Thank you for the support in the past. We need it even more this year as we strive to reach us. Welcome to Carter Friendly Stadium. After a short address from Sheridan, the fans were allowed onto the field, and that's when the real meaning of the day came shining through. It's the, it's the greatest team for me. I know it is. Yo, man. Two minutes before we know. I'm not taking general admission. We both have dead backs. I okay. can't sit in those seats. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Rachel. Thank you. How are you doing? It's been a good season. I feel I feel good for all the fans that we've had here, and I, I feel good for our players. They've had a really good year. Hey! It's the best show in town.